when I'm asked the question of how people can be more participatory and, and not just spectators, you know, the obvious answers that w are going to be given to this question, how can I be part of it, are, you know, uh, the power of prayer, which we believe in very strongly. Uh, we believe in also the power of uh, participation. Hashem said to, to Moshe to tell all of the children of Israel to come forth and give of themselves of their own monetary contribution so that the temple could be rebuilt. But I'm going to tell you something else. All that is obvious. I'm going to tell you something else that I think is more important, and that is the revolution on the level of the education of the Jewish people and all the righteous Gentiles in the world who connect themselves to Israel. The revolution has to be so encompassing that we have to realize our whole, we as, as a people, we as a, as a group of, hum, of human beings, our whole uh, orientation to this question is old, it's stale, it's sullied by our diaspora experience, it's poisoned by the cancer of what we have been through. The Jewish people have been very busy for 2,000 years, you know that. They've been busy basically trying to live through the next day. And therefore, to think about coming back to Jerusalem and building the temple when your entire community is about to go up in smoke, you know, it doesn't seem very realistic, although you'd be surprised maybe to learn that there were movements throughout history, beginning with the time of Bar Kokhba all the way through the Bali Tosafot in France, movements of highly orthodox, great rabbinical scholars who were in favor of coming to Israel and rebuilding the temple. Uh, but the point is this, you know, uh, what we're doing now is not a precedent. It's been done before. Obviously with the technology that we have today, it has greater meaning. Uh, obviously in the times that we're living in now, when the state of Israel has become a reality, this is not the child that we were praying for. We're not there yet, but it's an it ratzon. Hashem is obviously smiling on us. He's not a cynic. He didn't take us this far because he's laughing at us. But where is the culmination of Jewish history when we indeed become the light of the nations? How can you be a light to others if you yourself are sitting in the darkness? And the darkness is caused by Hester Panim, the only antidote to the universal spiritual malay that we all suffer from today is the dwelling of the divine presence amongst us that only comes about through the building of the holy temple. But when I speak of what has to be done, people have to begin to realize that none of this is going to happen automatically. None of this is going to come down from heaven. None of this is going to come about through some sort of mystical figure who is going to figure everything out for us. It's up to every single individual to begin to study and realize that the Holy Temple is supposed to be a reality. The Torah, the Holy Torah is based on action. Everything is about tikkun. It's about what we do in this world to make the world into a better place. And there is no parallel anywhere in the Torah to a belief like a building of a few million tons coming down from heaven. Because nowhere do we wait for Hashem to do the mitzvot for us. The very definition of a mitzvah is that Hashem commands and we fulfill. Now, when we look at the situation today, and we're confronted with a harsh geopolitical reality, and we're confronted with world opinion, and we're confronted with all those things that supposedly great leaders have to deal with, this is not the issue. You know why? Because there's still a God in the world. The question is, are we showing our integrity? Are we showing that we believe in Him, that we believe in ourselves, that we know that He believes in us enough to even care about the commandments? Enough to, I've heard rabbis say, oh, what do you want to build that for? It's just a big barbecue. I've heard great men, supposedly great men, you know, cynically laugh at the concept of the offerings. You know, the Rambam says that anyone who makes fun of any of the mitzvot of the Torah has no share in the coming world. And according to the Rambam, all of the mitzvot are for all time. We never received a cancellation order for any of them. Therefore, that obviously means that there's something very wrong with the structure of Judaism as it is today, because 202 mitzvot of the 613 are completely dependent in some way on the Holy Temple for their fulfillment. What is our attitude about those mitzvot? Are they dormant? Are they sleeping? Was it just a, a something of a bygone era? No. In order, according to all the codifiers, for something to be considered a mitzvah, it has to be for all time, and we never received that cancellation order. Think about it this way. You have a piece of chocolate cake. Rich, creamy frosting. It's a me movement. A me moment. Leave me alone about God. Please don't hock me a chanak about God. I'm enjoying myself. That's why in Hasidut, eating is an avoda because it's a time when normally we wouldn't be thinking about Hashem. So you're having that big, beautiful piece of chocolate cake, right? Leave me alone with all your theology. I, I'm just enjoying myself. But afterwards, you make al hamichim, right? And what do you say there? Have mercy, Hashem, on, this, on your city, Jerusalem, on Zion, on your altar. 
and on your sanctuary. My goodness, you can't even have a piece of chocolate cake without asking Hashem to have mercy on the altar and on the Holy Temple. Why is that? Because life is not worth living. That chocolate cake, the enjoyment that you felt is worthless, it's ludicrous, and it's almost sinful if, you, if it wasn't elevated by the, by the presence of Hashem in the world and by the rectification of all levels of creation that takes place in the Holy Temple. All roads lead to the Holy Temple, even that chocolate cake. But these things are not just a zecher. It's not just, oh, our sages, you know, coined that nusach of the prayer that we should say that to always remember the temple. No, they're trying to tell us, what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing? You're eating? You're sleeping? You can't, how are you living without the temple? You know what, tikkun chatzot. We say the midnight lament, and it's something that is basically only practiced by the by the very devout, by very special pious people, they, ra they rise up at midnight. Like on Tisha B'Av, and they sit on the floor with ashes and sackcloth, some of them here in Jerusalem, and they say this special mourning for the Holy Temple. Let me tell you the secret of Tikkun Hatzot. If you really feel the loss of the Holy Temple, you don't have to set an alarm clock to wake up. You can't sleep. You can't sleep. This is life. So the first thing that everyone has to do is start thinking like a, like, a, like a true person connected to the Torah, Jew, Gentile alike, and take it seriously, because Hashem takes us seriously. But why should He take us seriously if we don't even show Him a sign of life? The first sign of life is for us to readjust our values, to, to realign our consciousness and realize this has got to stop. Nothing is going to change unless we change it.